Hello, we are from Group 3 and we are going to present about the current control method of fasciolosis uh, worldwide. Okay. So, let's first talk about the life cycle of fasciola. Okay. So, um, fasciola actually infects both humans and also animals, mainly cattle and sheep. And their infective stage is metasacaria, which can be found in water plants. And uh, their diagnostic stage is uh, eggs that is uh, passed out in the feces. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the transmission um, of fasciola. So recent times, um, there's more uh, fasciolosis that's happening um, in humans and animals due to a few factors. So the first factor is climate and global changes. So the changes of climate and uh, climate temperature uh, can cause the changes in the life cycle of uh, fasciola and also it vectors. Another thing is the anthropogenic uh, environment modification, which is also the increase of the global temperature, which uh, can cause um, the uh, fasciola to to better adapt to the high high temperature. Uh, next is the import or export and the movement of livestock because livestock can be the source uh, of fasciola and they can bring and transfer to other animals. Next is also traveling and also man-made irrigation system yeah, which can bring uh, fasciola to crops and also to livestock. So next is, uh, is the distribution of fasciola. So, Fasciola hepatica is found more uh, compared to Fasciola gigantica and uh, it can be found uh, in more than 70 countries and uh, which mainly is uh, Latin America, Africa, Asia and also the Middle East. And Fasciola uh, gigantica is found in, uh, in a smaller ge geographic region which uh, includes um, Asia and also Africa. Okay, there's also an intermediate form which is found mainly in Asia where both Fasciola hepatica and Fasciola gigantica is also found. That's all. That's all. Right. Okay, so now I'll be talking about the general control methods of Fasciolasis globally. Um, so, the, so, next, the, so the first and the main uh, control method that is uh, broadly used worldwide is the triclabendazole medication. So why is this medication very important is that because this medication is highly reactive and it is uh, efficient in both humans and livestock and also it can work against juvenile and also adult fasciola species. So there's a study uh, there's a study being carried out to test the efficacy of triclabendazole. So how the experiment does is that you will infect uh, healthy sheep or goats with the metasacaria, metasacaria cyst, and then they will treat the goats with trichabendazole and then they will do postmortem on the goats uh, for several different hours to test the extensiveness of the trichabendazole towards the towards the parasite or fasciola species. And so these are the uh, postmortem findings on the fasciola. So we can see at the 24 hour, which is first day, uh, the effects were not apparent and there are no, the fasciola is still in normal infrastructure. While on the second day, there's little disruption to the tegument and also minor changes to the subtegument on the fasciola. And by third day, there's nothing of the tegumental syncytium and also a severe disruption in the subtegument. And we can see at the fourth layer that is totally devoid of tegument and also extremely severe ultrastructure of the fasciola. So this indicates that the trichabendazole is able to work within four days. So it so there is very high uh, high efficiency of the medication towards the liver fluke. Uh, next. So secondly, the another control method is to do fecal egg count to monitor the efficacy of trichabendazole. So this is very important because there's recorded emergence of trichabendazole resistance of fasciola hepatica populations uh, uh, in numerous countries uh, including the United Kingdom. So the fecal income reduction test 
has also been carrying out in the England and the Wales to test the efficacy of trecarbendazole in the sheep flocks. So if there is high figure egg counts uh, in correlated to the reduced efficacy of trecarbendazole. So meaning that if the trecarbendazole is low in efficiency, the figure egg count will show a numerous amount of eggs and this will indicate the decrease of efficacy in the trecarbendazole. So therefore it's Important to, important to know the trichabendazole resistance so that, uh, so, that the, so that we can do more research and to find out more medications uh, next time. So these are the examples of human, human, recorded human cases of fasciola resistance towards the medication. So we can see that there are several individuals in a series from Peru failed to respond to multiple doses of trichabendazole which represent the largest case series of treatment failures to trichabendazole. The next uh, control method is by practicing good management of livestock. So uh, some examples in dairy farms are the farmers will use young stock grazing on low risk areas. And next they will also utilize pasture or lands uh, which has previously been used by non-grazing utilization such as instant hay or cutting for silage. And then another thing is that uh, farmers also use, uh, also implement good drainage system, and this is also a common strategy employed in Germany, Lithuania, and Sweden, but it is least common in Denmark. And uh, lastly, is uh, the fencing, uh, fencing system of the farm. So um, fencing around wet areas and moving animals from wet to dry pasture is commonly practiced in Denmark farming. While these strategies are not common in Switzerland and Germany. So uh, that is all for the uh, general control methods globally. Thank you. So I will be presenting on control methods that is very specific to some of the countries that we have uh, studied on. So firstly, I will be starting with China. So in China, one of the steps that China took in controlling fasciolysis is that they reduced misdiagnosis and increased timely treatment. China had, China, China's biggest limitation with fasciolysis is that they have a very high rate of missed diagnosis because China is not endemic to any human fasciolysis by records and their parasite distribution also seems to be scattered because of the limitations that happened in their record organization. So what China has done to improve their rate, improve and to reduce rate of missed misdiagnosis is that uh, they have, they, have done, they have opted for better uh, immunological uh, serum antibody detection against fasciolysis and they have also uh, they have also seen records where the cuttle cuts method and the wash, washing sedimentation method has a high uh, misdiagnosis rate so they have opted more towards the immunological methods next slide and China has also strengthened health and health education and prevent indigestion of parasites. They have done this through four key methods, which is called the controlling, disrupting, treating, and sanitization. The controlling is the control of source infection, be it an be it an animal manure or any kind of source where the fascia is. And they have disrupted the route of transmission by actually doing health education to people about the ways in which particular transmits and they have done improved sanitation to reduce chances of transmission and they have also treated patients to reduce any form of a environmental distribution of particular eggs and China also has a better, uh, better human and livestock excrement management to reduce the water pollution from particular. Next slide. And another method China has done is that they have strengthened scientific research and focused more on technical talent research. This can be seen stemming from the limitation China had from the diagnosis of fasciola, where they had they had a very limited uh, and inefficient detection methods of fasciola. So they have opted to further study and improve the cuttle cuts methods and the washing sedimentation method for detection of fasciola in the early stage of infection. And China also seems to have a shortage of uh, tricla which is a drug that is used to treat fasciolysis. 
So what they have done is to strengthen the development and utilization of tetravendazole for better pharmaceutical trade of tetravendazole in China. And the next country we will be looking at is the United States. So the, the fasciolysis case that, that's been recorded in the United States is, is the liver fluke or the liver somatode known as fasciola hepatica. And, and from this case that we have studied from the United States, you can see that fasciola was not endemic in the United States. However, the United States had the environmental, uh, environmental conditions which allowed the completion of fasciola life cycle which we can see that uh, those two patients who were infected from uh, uh, fasciola had their clinical signs. And patient one, we can see here, had extensive disease and underwent multiple diagnostic procedures. And patient two had few symptoms and had fasciola diagnosed by a non-invasive evaluation. Next slide. And you can see that both these patients at initial stages, they were not really uh, de detected uh, they, their infection was not really detected through the diagnostic methods. However, they were given ciclabendazole and they seem to and they seem to have seen that the infection has stopped after the ciclabendazole. And both these patients got their uh, fasciola infection outside the United States given that the travel history says that they had a recent travel outside the United States. Next slide. Uh, we will be seeing the control methods uh, of fasciola in Peru. So what Peru has done is that Peru has Peru's uh, control methods mainly aimed at the, at the environmental conditions. Firstly, firstly they have improved the drainage of ditches, and they have also done regular cleaning of canals and increased the slope of the canal banks so that there is no water retention to allow any fascia growth or miracide growth that infects the snails or any other uh, parathenic host. And they have also done training sessions on fasciolysis where they train individuals to administer antiparasitic treatments to those infected. Next slide. And, 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 and in terms of livestock management, Peru has done regulation on grazing and, and regular anti-helminthic treatments to uh, console fasciolysis. And they also prefer breeds which have a higher tolerance and genetic resistance Towards, uh, towards the fasciolysis parasite. And for furthermore, they have also done, they have also, uh, done some pasture management where they remove uh, animals or uncontaminated, uncontaminated pastures from contaminated places to avoid any further infection growth in those uh, livestock population. And finally, we will be seeing the control methods that has been done in Bangladesh. And in Bangladesh, mainly the first step they took was to, was to replace livestock in agriculture with artificial intelligence or artificial technology. And uh, we can see that they have replaced cattle and buffalo as land tillers with power tillage. What this does is that this uh, reduces the chances of contamination of fasciola eggs in agricultural lands, which actually reduces the chances of fasciola spreading to humans through food. Through food, uh, through food source, and they have also done the killing of fasciola eggs from manures by composting them and using using them as biogas. And finally, Bangladesh has also took, took another step in uh, preventing fasciolysis infection, which is through educating the farmers. And they have done this by educating them on the dynamics of uh, fasciolysis transmission, so that the farmers would know. Uh, more about the more about the fasciolysis infection and do their best to reduce the chances of transmission. So these are the steps that we have uh, discovered through our research and studies, and we hope that we have done our best. Thank you.